Hello, I'm Bob Lex, and today I will be reading Romans chapter 6, New International Version. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live with it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized also into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ Jesus, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Jesus was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer the parts of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then shall we say? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. The book of Romans is the New Testament's longest and most structured and the most detailed description of what Christianity means. Paul lays out the core of the gospel message. Salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, not through works. His intent is to explain the good news of Jesus Christ in accurate and clear terms. As part of this effort, Paul addresses the conflicts between law and grace, between Jews and Gentiles, and between sin and righteousness. And we see here uh, that Paul offers a series of practical applications of how this can be done. And after comparing Adam and Jesus and what their choices brought into the world, Paul now turns to ask if Christians 
should continue in sin once they have been saved. Apparently, a, a lot of uh, Christians at that time thought that, well, Jesus' grace, we're saved by that, so why do we, why do we need to stop doing sinful things? Well, Paul gives several reasons why we must not continue to sin after we become Christians. We have died. By becoming a Christian, we, we have died to sin's power over us. We are now to serve righteousness, not sin. And Paul points out, and what good did sin ever do to us anyway? What benefits were there? And now we see that Paul begins throughout the book of Romans, he begins a discussion of what it means exactly and practically to be, to be released from the law of Moses, which the Jewish people were under, to be released from that and now subject to the grace from Jesus Christ. Thank you.